pretty exhilarating glimpse behind a magician's cloth, that little bit of reasoning. <laughs> hmm. You see, quite often, it'd be good fun to have a bit of a dance, to just stop thinking about it all and just, you know, have a bit of a dance. But I've got this voice inside my head all the time. Uh, 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 yeah. Yes, Daniel, <laughs> yes. On the surface of things, yeah. It would seem like a bit of fun uh, to have a little dance. However, let us think for a moment hmm, about the implications of said fun. You know, Daniel, as well as I know, that on no account do you want to look like a bit of a cunt. Hmm? Oh, I thank you very much, internal monologue. Yet again, you've, you've cut to the quick of things. Where would I be without you? You, you would be happy, Daniel. <laughs> Imagine if from time to time your internal monologue occasionally used words you didn't fully understand. <laughs> well, Daniel, that's surprisingly perspicacious of you. What, eh? <laughs> what do you mean, what, eh? Do you know what perspicacious means? Of course I do. I must. All right, if, if you know what it means, use it in a sentence. All right, R right. You just said the word perspicacious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Score one for flesh and bone, Mr. Ephemeral. <laughs> I've got three dimensions, motherfucker. How many have you got? <laughs> it's occasionally good fun to trash talk your internal monologue. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> You know, it's, it's, it's not really, um, it's, it's not really a lack of opportunity for having a bit of a dance, you know. There's sort of, there's countless chances for dancing these days, you know. Lots of, uh, of comedy clubs these days, sort of, after the comedy finishes, they turn into discos. What they do is they sort of clear the tables away, one light starts flashing, they put on, now that's what I call shit 27, and people pop it in a fat style. Now, many to time... <laughs> But it is a time, after such a gig, I've been safely ensconced in the relative post-gig solitude of the dressing room, you know, only to have some other comedian who'd be long come over and go, Hey, Dan, do you want to come out and have a bit of a dance? Do you want to come out and have a dance? And I'm like, absolutely not. No. I can think of nothing I'd like to do less, unless you happen to have access to some salt, a grater, and my penis. <laughs> you see, the way I think about it is this. If I'm dancing, I'm dancing because I love the music and the music's making me want to dance. I'm not dancing in, in order to be looked at and I hate it when I see people dancing in order to be looked at. I don't trust it and I don't want people to think that I'm dancing in order to be looked at and I think that if I go out into a room f full of an audience that I was recently performing to, it may look like I'm dancing in order to be looked at. Now you could make the counter argument here that after I've just been performing in this room in front of those people, it's little after the fact to be concerned about looking like an attention seeker, you know. <laughs> I've just been standing on a raised plinth demanding lights be pointed at me, people not smoke and not talk while my voice is amplified, but you know. <laughs> but I don't want to look needy, you know, so, so I, I, stay <coughs> I, I stay backstage. And these other comedians, you know, call them functional if you're wrong, they'll quite happily go out, have a bit of a dance amongst the people who were just watching the show. Is that not a bit fucking weird? Go, yeah, that's right. I was just up there being funny, now I'm down here with the honeys. Ha ha. <laughs> you know, is that not, is it not? And they just keep dancing around until some, let's call her a whore, some whore, she, <laughs> she comes up and starts grinding and says, oh, I liked your jokes, I did, I liked your jokes. Oh, will you fuck me, please? And they go, well, I've got a wife and I've got two kids, but I'm a cunt, so hop on. Here we go. Here we go. Moonwalk with me, baby. We're moonwalking to bleakness. I'm pretty sure it's this way. I go there quite often and I recognise the curly fries. <sighs> hotel rooms can get a bit bleak from time to time. We had ever sort of first few hotel rooms that you sleep in. You can't believe you get a little look. Like, oh my God, look at the room. The room is so clean. It's like it's been cleaned just for me. It's like they're expecting me. Almost some sort of booking system in operation. Look, look at the bed. The bed is like a freshly fallen cloth of snow rolling over an open country meadow. This room has been hewn this very day from innocence and ivory. Now, when I check into a hotel and when I breathe in, I can taste the stale semen of a thousand lonely businessmen. And, <laughs> uh, and you realise that 
that far from being far from being luxurious places, what hotel rooms are essentially a lonely wank closet. There's been there's been a thousand men wanking then crying here, and I'm going to be a thousand and one. Those those cards that they give you to hook on the outside of your door, that on the one side say please do not disturb, and on the other side say please clean my room, please. What they should say <coughs> is on the one side. <coughs> Sorry, is on the one side please. Uh, Please do not disturb, I am wanking, then I will be crying. And, and on the other side of that, please clean the spunk off my bed, then dry the tears on my face, then hold me while I sleep, I'm so alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>